Evolution. I, pardon me? Stop now. Took me a minute to hear. Whatever that name is, there is one power and one presence. It's one of the things that we teach in unity. Now, if you believe there's two powers and two presence, do you get kicked out? No. <laughs> We're okay with you being wrong. <laughs> argument about a devil, right? Now, I do believe that there is this thing called collective conscience, and I believe that all of us contribute to the collective conscience, and that it lives like uh, Terra de Chardin called it the noosphere. There's uh, this, this sort of collective belief system, and if collectively we believe in an evil energy, then we sort of can co-create that evil energy. But I don't believe it's the truth, and the Unity Founders don't believe it's the truth, and I don't believe from reading scripture that Jesus believed it's the truth, and he is my primary teacher on how to live this life. So, you got one. Okay, how about two? I am. I am. So I'm going to give you the long one. <laughs> when this... Uh, <coughs> When these five principles were first written, it read that Jesus was the Christed being, and he attained such a level of awareness, of oneness with the divine, that people actually mistook him for God itself, and they were right. And that that's true for me and for you that we are all expressions of the divine. Sometimes more, <laughs> sometimes less. In appearance, right? The appearance can be that I'm more or less. But the truth is, the truth is we are all expressions of the divine. Three. Charades. Okay. I'm <laughs> doing that. <laughs> Darn. It's the law of mind action. Oh, okay. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. The way that you think, the way that you believe, and, and whatever culture you're a part of, that that thinking, that consciousness that you hold in your mind will produce your experience of life. And it doesn't necessarily produce car wrecks if you're thinking about car wrecks, or, or red bicycles if you're thinking about red bicycles, or a million dollars if you're thinking about a million dollars. But it might, <laughs> especially if you follow through with the next two. So, four, prayer, prayer and meditation. That, that we participate in prayer and meditation on a regular basis. And that we believe that prayer and meditation are the tools to bring our consciousness in alignment with that divine presence that lives within and without. That that is the practice that allows us to know the truth for ourselves. Meditation. You can do it five minutes, you can do it for two hours. This is a, a knowing oneness with the divine. There's a second part to this fourth uh, uh, principle. It's affirmations and denials. It's that not only do we set time apart for prayer and meditation, but that we take affirmations with us throughout the day and we allow those to play in our minds over and over again so that we uh, brainwash ourselves <laughs> into whatever the truth is that you have discovered through your prayer and meditation. The, the daily word that we read was from uh, Thursday because I liked it. <laughs> I am filled 
with limitless energy. Okay, so I have this other thing going on in my mind. I'm tired. Does anybody have that one go on? So here's the, the basic denial and affirmation. My fatigue does not have any power over me. The experience of fatigue has no power to keep me from my good. The truth is, I am filled with limitless energy. If you want to think about that scientifically, you can think about all the electrodes and everything that's moving through your body. If you want to think about it metaphysically, you can realize that that source of energy that exists is constantly feeding into us at all times. I am filled with limitless energy. Together? I am filled with limitless energy. All right, so four is a big one, right? It's like 20 minutes in the morning and then all day long. It's figuring out what's getting in your way and making that not powerful and then creating a power statement that you can use to help brainwash. Because our brains need washing. Yes. <laughs> And then, five, action. Now here's the good one. Take action. What does that mean? Do something. Do something. <laughs> Anything. Do something. Now, this is the one that oftentimes we overlook in unity. Because I stop at prayer and meditation a lot of the time. Taking action is the natural result of having come to a place where we uh, have come over the last three Sundays. So I'm going to do a quick review. <coughs> On Christmas, we took the time to recognize that we are reborn in that Christ essence, innocent, pure, Holy. Whenever we say yes, I am open. I'm open to that divine presence. And two weeks ago, we did uh, uh, the burning bowl ritual in which we reviewed the last year and found those things that we'd like to release. We put them on paper, we burned them. We reviewed the last year, we found those things that we'd like to celebrate. We put those on paper, and then we wrote a letter of intention for the new year. I got them all. In a rubber band. You'll get them in July. And then, the following week, last week, Reverend Sherry Schultz came and did the White Stone Ceremony, in which she invited you all to turn within <coughs> And listen for the voice of the divine, the voice of God, the voice of Christ, the voice of Jesus, whoever it is that you hear when you turn to that divine within. To hear your new name, what is it that God would call you? And so now it's time to take action. And I'm going to suggest that taking action means figuring out with, from that intention stage that we have at the burning bowl, what the next small step is that you can take toward reaching that intention. And luckily, my friend, Carolyn Hendricks, has uh, come up with a great plan. So I'm invited her up here to talk about her plan. You've been hearing about it a little bit over the last couple of weeks. Please welcome Carolyn. Yeah, they're going to turn it on up there too. No. It's okay. Okay, we'll get oh. <laughs> Well, Carrie set that up perfectly, talking about action. Good morning. I'm Carolyn Hendricks. I know you as CJ. And I've had the privilege and the pleasure of working with the team who has developed the 30-day challenge. It begins today. We finally get to launch, and we're all excited about that. Hope you are, too. This is the 
action part. So several months ago, we started a conversation about the need to raise some funds and the desire to have some fun doing it. So we set about to mesh these two ideas of fun and funds. And I don't know about you, but I don't have any problem. I do not struggle with setting intentions, resolutions, goals. However, you define that desire to change, but it's the follow through that I struggle with. It's the action part. I can think it forever, but doing it is something else. And I'm going to make the assumption that I'm not the only one in this room who experiences that. Oh, yeah. That. Anybody uh, else? Uh, Thank you. Raise like your hands. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we experience, then on January 5th comes and we experience this disappointment because we haven't met the intentions that we set for ourselves, the promises we made to ourselves. So today, if you wish, you can set a new path, a new intention, and the 30-day challenge is here to help you. This is a reminder that you are here now, exactly where you need to be. And you are invited to approach this moment with a forward from here attitude. Allow your awareness, your consciousness, to shape this new path. We decided that one way to increase our awareness and, and complement our action is to contribute a monetary amount on a daily basis for every day we honor our commitment. At the end of the 30 days, those funds can be contributed to Unity, and that's the fundraising part. And the really neat part about these JAR contributions, is what we're calling them, is that we have two families who have pledged to match the funds up to $1,000 each. Yay. So, so that's two to one? It's two to one. So I'm going to give you an example here. For instance, if you contribute, if you des designate to yourself that you're going to contribute a dollar a day for every day that you meet your challenge, it instantly becomes three dollars. And if 50 people contribute one dollar a day for 30 days, that's forty-five hundred dollars. That's that's big. That's a lot, and it's pretty easy to do. It's okay if at the end you decide that you want to contribute to another cause you support or you just want to celebrate that you did it, that's fine. Whatever you decide, know that we are all holding you in consciousness and in prayer as you take the action to do it. Some of us on the planning team um, started our challenge on January 1st because we were just too excited to wait until the 12th. So we're now 12, dollars, 12 days into our plan. You know, it feels really great yes. watching the... <laughs> well, I'm six. Well, I'm six. Well, I try. <laughs> so the so green in the jars is filling up, and that's really great to see. And, mm -hmm. and even though we're all on different paths, we take different actions, it's so great to know that we're all supporting each other in whatever we have chosen as our action step. Uh, by signing up, there's a sign-up sheet in the lobby. I think some of you have already done it. Well, 30 of you have already done it, which is yay. We're really happy about that. Um, and you provide your name and email address. You will receive weekly messages of support and meditation. And on Sundays, there will be talking tables in the lobby where you can sit down and talk to other people on the path, whatever their path is, and talk about your successes and your frustrations, if you have any. Um, everyone, registered or not, is invited to be a part of these discussions because we see this as a community building event as well as a fund and fundraising event. And in addition, you can request a challenge partner and the prayer team will keep you in their prayers through the 30 days. Change is a challenge, so just know that you are supported as you make these changes. Our challenge will, continue, will um, conclude on February 12th. And to celebrate that, we will have a Valentine's dinner on the 14th. Everyone, whether you've been part of the challenge or not, is invited to a catered dinner. No potluck, you don't have to bring a thing. Well, except your money to pay for your dinner. But other than that, you don't have to bring a dish, it's catered. And everybody, again, is invited to attend, including your children. You'll be receiving more information on this dinner as the weeks go by. But for now, here's what you need to know about the dinner. It's Friday, February 14th, beginning at 5.30. Dinner will be a pasta bar catered by Pellegrinos. 
The cost is $25 for adults, $750 for children under 12. We ask that advanced reservations and payment be made by the Sunday before, which is February 9th. We have to give our count to the restaurant by that point, so it would be really nice if we knew who was coming by then. Uh, we're going to have some music provided by our music team of Janine and Terry. The money jars will be received and blessed, and I think that's going to be cool. I'm, I'm picturing a big laundry basket full of dollar bills. <laughs> I'm really excited about that part. There will be multiple opportunities for gifting on that night, and we'll get more details on that, but be thinking about uh, raffle baskets, dessert dash, uh, table challenges. There's going to be lots going on. And we're also going to have a photo booth done by a couple of our youth, so oh, cool. that will be a fun thing to do, too. We do need volunteers for setup and cleanup and dessert dash, and you can see me or Kathy Evans. Kathy's not here today, but see one of us and get on that list, because, uh, what, what did you tell me? More hands make lighter work? That's what they say. That, <laughs> yeah, I'd like to try that. More hands, so, yeah. <laughs> and finally, I want to thank the members of the team, um, Reverend Terry, Kathy Evans, Mary Ellen Solstice, Tommy Helm, Sue Houseman, Karen Reddick, and Indita Goines. Events like this don't just happen. It takes many hours of discussion and work and coordination, and I'd like to honor them for their time, for their time and talent and commitments to this project. If you have any questions, I'll be out in the lobby after service, and I thank you and hope you want to participate. Thank you, Karen. So the thing that excites me about this particular project is the opportunity for us to take action at the same time, which is part of our spiritual principles, that we can all do this together. Now, you don't have to sign up if you don't want to support. That's fine. If you don't, I mean, if you don't want any support, email support. But I would, I would really highly recommend that you take it and, and at least use this 30 days as a practice. Now, I did start and then had to start again and then had to start again. But I've started now. I'm six days in to my commitment. And, and what I've learned is that there is a big difference between making a commitment for taking something away or adding something. Like, I, I want to give you some tools that you can actually use here today. If you want to add something to your life, one of the ways that can help you to be successful is to figure out what time are you going to do that thing? Where are you going to do that thing? What are the, the props that you are going to need in advance? So one of the, the uh, commitments that I have made, because I've made more than one, is to have a regular meditation time, not a willy-nilly meditation time. Anybody else have willy-nilly meditation times? <laughs> so a regular meditation time. And so what that means is figuring out where, what chair am I going to sit in? What pillow do I need to support my back before I even get there at 7 o'clock in the morning? What time am I going to do at 7 o'clock? That's a good time for me. How long is it going to be? What do I need? I want to keep a timer. I want a 10-minute timer next to me. Got a 10-minute timer. What am I going to meditate on? So if we remove all those things that you might get in the way of, of making it happen. I didn't get the right pillow. I didn't, or, or if it's exercise, put the gym bag in the car. <laughs> don't, don't be waiting. Don't be having it in the house. Don't be thinking, I'm going to go, but I don't have any shoes. <laughs> right? So, so uh, reducing friction is what they call that in psychology. And then if you're taking something away, that's a little more challenging. When you remove something and you want to create a new habit, or a not habit, around, <laughs> so I'm doing one of each, right? I've added meditation, a 10 minute, seven o'clock meditation, and I'm taking away sugar. <laughs> now, thank you. Because <laughs> that's sort of how it feels. 
feels. <laughs> and so what the, the uh, science says is to not wait for the six month reward, the one month reward, even the one week reward. The best uh, practice is to make yourself give, receive a reward every single time you do something that's not that thing. And so for me, it's taking time to make meals that are fabulous. Mm -hmm. Right? If I don't get cupcakes, I'm eating steaks and prawn. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm making plans in advance because my mind does not automatically go to making sure that the crisper drawers are full of vegetables. It's not my first go-to place. And so it's making the plans in advance. So I want to invite you into this as well. Being conscious. And then every time you do that thing or you don't do that thing, Allow your mind to have an affirmation. So the meditation that I've chosen is a 10-minute medita meditation on faith and will. I've been working out of a 12 Powers book written by Mary Ellen Saltis and um, Mo Kiefer years ago. Uh, they gifted it to me, and so I've been working out of this book, Spiritual Vitamins. And as a result of one 10 minute meditation recently, I came up with this affirmation. I made a decision and I am willing to take action in support of the decision I made. I made a decision and I am willing to take action in support of the decision I made. You wanna try that? I made a decision and I am willing to take action to support the decision I made. Yeah. Over and over, brainwashing that brain. Brainwashing that brain. So at the, the same time that we're doing this in the micro, in the individual level, as a group, we're kind of doing this work as a community as well. And we started an appreciative interview, appreciative inquiry interview process last year. We've come to the end of the interviews, we've got all the answers together from you, and we've been doing these presentations. Well, on February 1st, we're going to get together and choose our mission, vision, and values. It's something that we, well, it's recommended that you do every three to five years, but we do it every five to seven years, apparently. <laughs> and, and, so when we do this work of getting together to choose our mission, vision, values, it's much the same as, as getting together with the burning bowl and saying, okay, well, this is the stuff that I liked, this is the stuff that I can release, and this is my intention, except for it's a much bigger process. And so we want to make sure to invite you to be a part of that process, too, because when we get to Valentine's Day and we have this celebration about 30 days of action, then we're also celebrating knowing who we are as a community. Knowing what we're here for as a community. We're confirming that the mission and vision that we already have chosen are right for us as a community. But probably not. Because <laughs> I want to change it. But I'm not going to be in charge of it. So you guys can get an opportunity to speak just as much as me. But I hope that you'll come. Do you see how this sort of all flows together? This individual and group practice. So. Everybody do that with me, please. I'm excited. into something bigger. I hope that it changes my life. And I'm willing to take it one day at a time, as they say, and to do the footwork. And I strongly invite you to join me in that. I have asked someone to be my prayer partner during this time period. If you 
also think that working together with a partner would be beneficial to you. Well, I have handouts out there in the lobby on how to be with a prayer partner, and there's actually a check mark on the, on the sign up list for um, being assigned a prayer partner if you would like one. My prayer for each and every one of you is that you know this truth, that you are filled with divine energy, that it flows in you and through you, and that you are more powerful than you even know in your head. That when we tap into our hearts, our souls, and that divine presence that we call God, that we are powerful beyond measure on the individual level and on the community level. God bless you. Love prepare me to be a sanctuary. melt 
into this moment, knowing that we are fully supported in our physical being as well as our emotional, spiritual, psychic being. There is one presence, one power, weaving us together that each of us is one with the one. I invite you to allow these words to be your own. I am a living expression of the divine. I open to a greater experience of spirit in my heart, in my mind, and in my body. I know the truth of that energy life source that flows through me. I know the truth of the energy life source that flows through all. I invite you to take a deep breath again and release. move into a time of silence to be with that source. I am one with the one in the silence. I am one with the one. Divine energy flows through me now. Together. Divine energy flows through me now. We're so grateful for this opportunity to know the truth of our souls, the truth of our being. We pray that all people know this truth all places.